Hi, the project that you're going to do for this particular unit, week one, linear motion, is going to involve graphing. So if you need to replay this video, by all means, replay the video. One of the things that I need you to know about all of this stuff is that you see this all the time, especially on the SAT. You will see this across curriculums. You will see graphs when you're doing math class. You'll see graphs when you're doing biology. You'll see graphs when you're doing social studies. You're gonna see graphs in the newspaper, on the news, everywhere you see graphs. You need to be able to interpret those graphs and you need to know, quite frankly, that people can make graphs look the way they want them to look. If they want you to think it's a huge difference, they're gonna make the graph be really tall. Or if they want it to be look like it's a small difference, sometimes they'll shrink everything down. Graphs will say what you want them to say and you need to know that. Now, one of the things that we need to talk about are some graphs that you already learned in algebra class. A linear graph and an exponential growth. And I feel fairly confident that you've got these down, you've seen them before. A linear graph is just going to be a diagonal line. And an exponential growth graph is your parabola. In our circumstance, you're probably only going to see a portion of the parabola because in physics, we don't worry about negatives. We can't do negative time, for example. Uh, we don't do negative velocities. And so you won't see us usually do too much um, with any kinds of negatives. So that's why I've only done the upper portion of the quadrants, okay? All right, now, one of the key things that you're going to want to pay attention to are the labels on the axes. It's going to tell you a whole heck of a lot, okay? Now, just to do a quick review, I've got some information over here about slope. In your math instruction, typically, you will see this definition for slope. The definition says delta y over delta x. Now, delta x is that triangle, delta, and delta just means change in. It's a fancy mathematical symbol, technically it's a Greek letter, and all it means is change in. So the formula that you actually use when you're doing slope typically is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And if you wanna know how, how much something changed, if it started at 10 and it ended up at four, it changed, it decreased by six. What did you do with the numbers to figure that out? You simply subtracted them. So what does that triangle mean? The triangle just means how much did it change or subtract the numbers. Now, Y is always on top, X is always on the bottom when you're doing your slope. So if you've got a graph, like this one over here, and you look on the y-axis, technically the y-axis on this one is your distance, okay? Remember distance on this graph, because of the way it's labeled, is in meters. On the bottom is where your delta x goes. Your x-axis is time, and if you remember from our formulas that we reviewed uh, at the beginning of this unit, distance divided by time equals velocity. And what were the units of velocity? The units of velocity were meters for distance and seconds for time. So this particular graph, if we had to do the slope of a line on this graph, it would be in meters per second, or the slope of the line would give us the velocity. You can do this with any graph. It doesn't matter what subject, what topic, it's irrelevant. You can always figure out what the slope of that line is going to tell you. Okay, here is a second graph. This second graph has different labels on the axes. So this particular slope is gonna tell you something different because it's not the same kind of graph. 
in this particular slope, if I look at the y-axis, the y-axis is your velocity. Okay, the y-axis is your velocity. On the bottom is where your change in x goes, or your x numbers. The x-axis is time. So now I have velocity over time. Now this is going to get a little tricky. I'm going to do this in a way that I would have taught it previously. Remember, velocity, according to the graph, I apologize, there's a glare, according to the graph is in meters per second. So I'm going to have meters per second. And now I'm going to divide that by the time. Okay, now I already have a fraction. So I'm going to do divided by the time, which is S. And remember, we never divide fractions. We always keep me, change me, flip me. So if I keep me, change the sign, flip me over, I end up with meters per second squared. So what is the slope of this particular graph going to tell you? It's going to tell you information about the acceleration, because remember, accelerations are measured in meters per second squared. So this slope tells you about the acceleration. Okay, now we're going to need to take our graphs and we're going to need to interpret the graphs for the project for this particular unit. Now, I have listed for you here distance time graphs and velocity time graphs. And you actually may want to come back to this video while you're doing your project so that you can kind of look it over and check things out. So I'm going to try to give this a, as little glare as I can on the parts that I'm talking about. So here we go. This graph right here is a distance time graph. Do you notice the very first thing I did was go to the axes? It's going to be the most important thing that you do. Always look at the labels on the axes. So this is telling me about the distance. The distance is way up here. So let's suppose that that was a distance of 10. So after time, one second, if I read up the graph, I'm sitting at 10 meters. After two seconds, I'm sitting at 10 meters. I'm still sitting at 10 meters, 10 meters, 10 meters. I am 10 meters away the whole entire time, which means I haven't moved at all. I am stopped. Now, if I'm stopped, what is my speed? My speed is zero. You will look down here on this graph. It is a velocity time graph. And do you notice that the flat line is sitting at a velocity of zero? So V is equal to zero the whole entire time. They are two different graphs, two different axes. They tell you two different things. What's the slope of this line? The slope of this line is zero. It's flat. So the slope on this particular velocity time tells me about the acceleration. Well, I'm not accelerating. My acceleration or my slope of the line is zero, and that totally makes sense. If I'm going zero for my velocity and I'm zero the whole time, am I accelerating? No, not at all, okay? All right, now, this next graph up here, again, I did all the distance time graphs on the top, and I did all the velocity time graphs on the bottom. This tells me that my rise over run is going to be the same as my rise over run, my rise over run. The whole entire time, my rise over run is exactly the same. Well, rise is meters and run is seconds and meters over seconds is velocity. So this one represents a constant velocity. If I were looking at a velocity time graph, a constant velocity would mean I'm going 
and, 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 and the whole entire time. Do you see how these two graph the exact same motion? But the graphs look different because of the fact that they have different labels on them. If I'm going the same velocity the whole entire time, the slope of this line again is zero. My acceleration is zero. All right, now you will notice on this side over here that both of those two graphs represent some kind of acceleration. In this one, you are speeding up. It looks like an exponential growth graph. This one, you are slowing down. Do you notice that these look like parabolas? This one's half of a parabola, but it is upward. This one is half of a parabola, but it is facing down. And that has everything to do with accelerating, positive, and decelerating, negative, okay? All right, now, on this graph, remember that you have different axes. These are velocity time graphs. These are distance time graphs. That's why they look different, okay? In this one, if I did the slope of the line, it would represent the acceleration. It's telling me that it's accelerating by a constant number the whole time. I'm increasing by 10, I'm increasing by 10 again, I'm increasing by 10 again, and every time I increase my velocity, I get faster and faster and faster, which is what acceleration means anyway, okay? This one is going down. Please use this graph to help you when you do your project for this particular unit.